Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Kodak Brownie Reflex 20. Uh, it was made in the 50s. The Camerosity code on this one's film insert is YMOY. So this one was actually made in March of 1960. It's a pseudo TLR with a really nice bright finder and it has these framing lines in here for doing uh, super slides which went into two inch by two inch mounts. It takes two and a quarter inch square, about six centimeter uh, frames on 620 film and it is too small inside so you, you really can't use 120 spool. Uh, I've heard people file them down and use nail clippers. I just re-spooled onto a metal uh, 620 spool. It has a 70 millimeter uncoated meniscus lens. Unlike a lot of these, this one has zone focusing. Close-ups is 4 to 6 feet. Uh, groups, 6 to 12 feet. And scenes, 12 feet to infinity. The aperture uses Waterhouse stops. I don't know if you can see that. And the markings here, 13, 14, and 15, are exposure values. They are not the F number. So 13 is F11, 14 is F16, and 15 is F22. It has a single speed rotary shutter. 30th to a 60th of a second um, information is kind of all over the place and it probably just depends on the age, condition, and condition of the spring. I ballparked this one at about 30 seconds and exposure was pretty good. There is no bulb setting. It has double exposure prevention. It's a mechanism down here. So you wind it up and then you can take another shot. It has a film counter red window film counter with a cover and one thing that's interesting it has this slider on the bottom that says uh, load and exposures 1 through 12 so when you load you can just keep winding but then if it's set to exposures 1 through 12 well with film in it anyway um, it locks at each frame so you don't have to keep opening the, uh, the red window. This one uh, it stops a little bit short of the number and a little bit more each time. Um, so what I would do is I would wind it, see where it was in the red window, then flip this over to load and smooth it just a little bit more until the, the frame number was centered in the window and then I can set this back to lock and it'd be good for a couple of shots before you know it coming short of the number started to really affect the framing. There's no tripod socket but it does have this little foot on the front so you can set it onto something. Uh, this one came with a Codalite midget flash holder. It was, as you can probably see in here, really crudded up um, from someone having left batteries in it. it takes two pin light batteries, double A's. I did try one shot, but I was not sure if I had it cleaned out well enough. And I was also using an M3 bulb, which is made for, uh, they were the ones that the Kodak pack film cameras used. And this one uh, was supposed to use, let's see what it was here, M25 or 25. So it wasn't the right kind of a bulb, and I'm not sure about this. So I biffed one frame there. Uh, one thing that I did wrong, I was checking the focusing, cleaning up the lenses, making sure that the shutter fired. Did not notice this chip out of the plastic here. And you can see that it goes up uh, behind the shutter mechanism. So I ruined about half of the roll of film before I noticed that. Got some black console tape over it. So I got some shots like this with these weird dagger shapes. Although this one 
is really cool, kind of abstract. I have no idea what it was supposed to be a picture of. And then finally, uh, some pictures of mountains and this gnarly tree. I got some really nice shots. So even though it's a simple lens, and this camera obviously has seen some miles on it, it takes sharp, sharp pictures. Um, the mountain scenes, I did use a yellow filter. It's not threaded for it, so I just held it on here and took the picture. So I do have a similar camera from 1962, and the film insert is identical. So I'm hoping that I can use the shape of the plastic from this one to repair this one. So if I do get it fixed, I may actually shoot another roll through it. I would really like it. So I will see you then. I'll see you then.